Hello and welcome to another edition of Ad Legends. I'm really excited to be here today with a true marketing guru and legend, Tony Weissman. Welcome, Tony. Hey, Matt. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. Good to see you too. Uh, so a lot of people know you as a former CMO of Duncan and even more probably people know you as uh, you were CEO of Digitas North America for years and, and spent a great career there. Um, talk a little bit about what you've been up to these days. Well, uh, what I've been able to do, which is great, is advise companies um, who are generally reinventing the industry, uh, like you guys. And so I'm really enjoying some board work and uh, consulting and advising with uh, early stage businesses where I think we've got a, a real uh, compelling thesis and a right to win. And I'm really enjoying that a great deal. You know, you spent, a, you spent a good part of your career in the agency side of things and made the move to the client side, which I know is some, some people's just some sort of the dream for some agency people and sort of the nightmare for other agency people. So talk a little bit about what advice you'd give to agency people that are thinking about that move. Oh, I highly recommend it and wish I had done it earlier in my career. I think it really helps you understand how your clients think about uh, their business on a daily basis. I would have been a better agency person if I had spent more time in a client role. I would have had a better appreciation for what really matters. And um, I think I would have also understood that my clients didn't think about me nearly as much as I thought they did. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it really does help to, to see both sides. I think there's a benefit to both. And I would say the same thing to people who've never spent time in an agency. I think there's a real strength in both. And I think the best marketers are the ones not only have been both sides of that table, but I've had a bunch of different seats. And, and the more time you can spend in different seats uh, and seeing the industry from different angles, the better off you are. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about, about YouTube. You know, we've, sure. we've talked about this obviously a lot in the past, but um, you know, there's, there's definitely a shift uh, I've seen a shift in the last year, especially if pe people used to think of YouTube, used to bucket it as sort of one of the many social platforms, digital platforms that people could use, but it's more and more being bucketed into a, you know, TV buys and yeah. thought of as a, as a platform to reach all ages, all types of people. Tell me a little bit about from the, from the sort of the marketers standpoint, what you're seeing. Well, I think it's fascinating what, what YouTube has gone through ever since its acquisition in, in the early years when it was a, a curiosity and then sort of its uh, early adolescence when it was the place to find young people who aren't watching TV to the day, time today where, uh, particularly based on mobile device and, you know, digitally native young people, a screen's a screen's a screen. and. Right. Uh, we all know that sight, sound, and motion is still the most compelling way to tell a story. It's what's most memorable. It's what's emotional. And, you know, video will, for the foreseeable future, be the most compelling way to connect with humans. And now I think what you're seeing is these sort of arbitrary distinctions that used to exist. You know, media companies and agencies used to have network buyers and syndication buyers and cable buyers. And over time, that became sort of, you know, linear and then digital was over here and you know i think it's all morphed into where can i get the best returns on my investment by reaching the right audience with the right you know level of efficiency and i i, I think that that just follows as it often does in our industry this follows basic consumer behavior and you know i know my own usage and i'm sure yours and many other people is i don't think when i'm watching you know uh, an app for, uh, you know, my Apple TV versus, um, you know, a, a YouTube video on my iPad versus et cetera, et cetera. I don't necessarily think I'm a different person and I don't bring a different set of experiences. I still grab, you know, a soft drink out of the fridge right beforehand and I still pause when I need to do something and I still multi-screen, blah, 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 all those things. And so, you know, I think we've created distinctions based on distribution methodology which do not line up with the distinctions that consumers are just like, where's, where's the next, uh, you know, peaceful, uh, piece of useful entertainment. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, 
connected TV is sort of a, a broad term that covers a lot of things these days. And, and YouTube, again, is, is, is part of that. Talk to me a little bit about what you're seeing um, with some of the companies you work with or advise um, for how they're how they're going to try to get some reach on on connected TV because it's it's a um, it can feel like a complex thing for for marketers and advertisers. Yeah, I think it's true. I think it is complex. I mean, I think CTV yeah. is where you know YouTube and its group were three or four years ago, in which it just felt somewhat overly complex, and I think it'll get simpler. Um, you know, I think look, YouTube is the dominant <laughs> provider of CTV. YouTube is a dominant force regardless of you know, how, you, how you categorize it. And I think, frankly, if you don't have YouTube as a central part of your, of your media plan, I, I, it baffles me. Um, and I, I think it's just, uh, it's, it's incredibly versatile in how people come to it, how people ingest it, when and in what lengths, et cetera. Um, I think CTV is a complicated way of saying, let's just apply data to Linux to, you know, sites on emotion the way we have to, oh, I don't know, search, and, oh, I don't know, digital video. Like, I, I think there is nothing better than trying to provide some level of data to who sees, uh, you know, a standard linear ad. As a, you know, as an example, like if you're selling cars, why would you be, you know, selling cars to a family that just bought a car? Mm -hmm. Because that, you know, that's a knowable thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that, um, when you know, and, I, and I, I don't believe that most marketers should go down rabbit holes of target. I think what I, this is one of the things I advise a lot of, of brands on, which is just because I can get, you know, eight different criteria to line up about an individual doesn't mean I should. Sure. I think you really need to think broadly about the kinds of people who are likely to be in market for what I'm selling. And so when I was at Duncan, the kinds of people who are likely to be in the market for what we're selling are basically people, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Two thirds of American drink coffee every day. Most people like to drink coffee from lots of different places. You know, it, you know, you, you, we, we, we stop doing deep rabbit holes, for example, of what we don't market to Starbucks consumers. That's not true. Starbucks mm -hmm. consumers drink Dunkin' and vice versa. You know, it could be time of day, it could be habit, it could be going to or from work, whatever. The big, the big new thing that, that we're talking to clients about is brand suitability, which is really more aligning with your brand's values. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you'd, you'd help a brand, you know, if they wanted to advertise on YouTube, but they had concerns about brand suitability, um, you know, how would, how would you advise them to work with partners and, and, and do it in a way that they wouldn't limit scale, but they would, they would still like not uh, have a foul and put their ad somewhere they don't want it to be? Well, what surprise you to say, I would say call fixability because I think you guys do have <laughs> a nuanced understanding of this issue. I think it's you know, similar to what we were just talking about. If you follow it out the window, you're going to end up in boring places where consumers don't care. Right. Um, and on the other hand, you can do a lot of things well and the CEO will never know it. Your right. ad ends up in the wrong place. <laughs> you'll find out about it. Yeah. Says, you know, I can't tell you how many screen grabs have been made and sent because somebody just guessed enough time at what the CEO's email was and, you know, sent, and then it was forwarded the link with the WTF. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, I think fear of that, and it could obviously have very severe ramifications, uh, boycotts or, or misinformation, makes most marketers really, really nervous. And so I think suitability is a terrific way to think about it because it doesn't sort of create this black and white. It doesn't create these really rigid standards. It just says there are certain places where my brand makes sense. And I just need somebody who knows how to do this with 100% reliability as my partner. And I think you guys are really good at that because, you know, if the alternative is not to be on YouTube, that's dumb. If the alternative right. is to be in only 5% of YouTube, that's dumb. On the other hand, like the reality is that the people that we want to talk to for at any particular market or any particular time, they do a lot of different things during the day and they go to a lot of different types of stories and you want to be there. 
Good. Well, let's uh, let's change gears a little bit and talk about um, part of the things we like to do in this series is ask people about their own YouTube habits. Ah. Uh, these habits change day to day, but what, what are sort of your typical YouTube habits? Well, so um, we were talking before about music, and I know you're, uh, you're a musician. Are you familiar with the um, uh, song Exploder? Oh, you know yeah. That? That's my favorite. I love okay. that. So I love... Um, and Vox does, does one of these as well. Um, I love these, I love music on YouTube. So let me just put it that way. I was just watching Rihanna Giddens, um, do a great, you know, uh, a great performance. Um, I think music on YouTube is the perfect little, um, you know, app, you know, the, 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 the separator in the course of a busy day when you just want a few minutes and, um, sometimes you want to watch a performance. Other times you want to like get a little behind the scenes, like, how, you know, you want to go a little deeper, like what was the inspiration for that? I love it for that. I do like a lot of sports clips as well. Um, you know, I think, um, I, I will admit I've gotten to be one of those guys who, there aren't that many full matches and games that I want to sit through. That's right. You no, know? and I do <laughs> want to see, you know, some extraordinary um, highlights. Highlights, yeah. Um, I will point you, I, this is going to date us, um, but, the last night's Islanders Bruins game, I'm pretty sure it was last night. Yeah. Um, watch the national anthem. And you can see it on YouTube. When and, when they when she stopped singing. And yeah, that was powerful. Right? That was like, really powerful. So you've seen it, right? And you're like, yeah. you know, and people are sharing it, sports are back. Like, yeah. That was really, really got to me today. And you know, yeah. how else am I going to see that? You know, wait for the 10 o'clock news, you know. <laughs> Definitely. No, that's exactly it. And and not everyone that would want to watch that whole game, not everyone would want to watch that whole game, but pretty much anyone would appreciate that one clip. So that's that's what's good about the sharing that happens the day after, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. Cool. Well, with that, uh, I'll say thanks. Thanks again, Tony, for joining us. Loved having you and uh, hope to see more examples of national anthems sung by whole crowds. Um, and I'll share them with you if I do. <laughs> Please do. Hey, it's great to talk with you and I'm always happy to do anything I can for you guys. Great. Thanks again, Tony. Take care. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.